Welcome to MSB lecture series on main group chemistry. This is going to be the last lecture on group 15 elements. Once after completing this one, I will move on to the chemistry of group 16 elements. Uh, today let me look into group 15 halides. To start with, let us look into the reactions of phosphorus pentachloride. In fact, phosphorus pentachloride is a very useful reagent. You can see in the reaction scheme I have given in this slide, uh, PCl5 when it is treated with uh, alcohols leads to the formation of chlorides. Similarly, when PCl5 is treated with fluorinating agents such as KHF2, it leads to the formation of potassium hexafluorophosphate. When it is treated with water, depending upon the reaction condition that leads to the formation of either phosphoric acid or phosphoryl chloride or POCl3. PCl5 on treatment with phosphorus pentoxide leads to the formation of same POCl3. Similarly, PCl5 when it is treated with ACF3, a good fluorinating agent leads to the formation of ionic complex having PCl4 plus and PF6 minus and treatment of PCL5 with BCL3 leads to the formation of PCL4 plus, BCL4 minus ion pair. Uh, PCL5 reacts with hydrazine to form bisphosphine imine. Here I have shown and similarly when uh, PCL5 is reacted with ammonium chloride in chlorinated solvents such as symmetric tetrachloroethane leads to the formation of uh, phosphazines with n equals uh, 3, 4 up to 8 with trimeric and tetrameric cyclotriphosphazines being major products. So, let us look into some aspects concerned around POCl3. Among the phosphorus oxyhalides, the most important one is POCl3. This can be prepared by reaction of PCl3 with O2 or one can also prepare starting from P4O10. So, P4O10 when it is reacted with uh, PCl5 gives as I mentioned directly uh, PCl3 can be reacted with oxygen to form POCl3. So, phosphoryl trichloride is a colorless fuming liquid. and melting point is 275 Kelvin and boiling point is 378 Kelvin okay. and of course, this undergoes readily hydrolysis by water liberating HCl. Some of the many uses of POCl3 are as phosphorylating and chlorinating agents and also as a reagent in the preparation of phosphate esters. If you want to know little bit about uh, the bond parameters, this PO bond distance is 145 picometer and this angle is 115 whereas this angle is 103 and PCL bond distance is 199 picometer. Okay. So, similarly arsenic forms halides uh, ASX3 trivalent halides as well as pentavalent halides as ASX5 for example, AS X3 and AS X5 both are known. 
uh, with respect to X equals fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine and when it is penta, uh, it is only X equals fluorine and chloride are known and trihalides can be prepared by direct combination of the elements or one can also use arsenium oxide for example, AS2O3 when it is treated with concentrated hydrochloric acid it gives okay. uh, similarly treatment of AS2O3 with uh, calcium fluoride in presence of sulfuric acid leads to the formation of In the solid, liquid and gas state ASF3 and ASCl3 have molecular trigonal pyramidal structures very similar to PCl3. Of course, with an appropriate reagent ASCf3 may act as either fluorine acceptor or fluorine donor. I will show you both of these reactions. For example, ASF3 when it is treated with uh, KF which is a strong fluorinating agent leads to the formation of K plus ASF4 minus. Uh, in contrast, when ASF3 is treated with uh, strong fluorine acceptor such as SBF5, it forms So, it shows the dual nature of ASCF3. So, it can act as a fluoride donor as well as fluoride acceptor. The reaction of arsenium trichloride or ASCL3 with dimethylamine and excess of HCl in aqueous solution leads to the formation of as 2 cl 93 minus anion having this composition The structure of this AS2Cl9 is dimeric. So, ASF5 is a colorless gas, antimony trihalides are low melting solids, low melting solids and although these contain trigonal pyramidal molecules, each 
antimony center has additional long range intermolecular SPX interactions. I will show you later with some substructures. We have we come across this kind of interactions. The trifluoride and trichloride are prepared by reacting Sb2O3 with concentrated HF and HCl respectively, very similar to I showed you in the case of As2O3. SPF3 is a widely used fluorinating agent and is a very powerful fluorinating agent. It converts for example, B2Cl4 to B2F4 and COCl2 phosgene to either COClF or COF2 can also convert SiCl4 to SiF4 or SOCl2 to SOF2. So, here fluorinating agent. And of course, one can also convert PCL3 to PF3 as well. Okay. So, reaction between SBF3 and MF gives salts which include K2SBF5 also. For example, SBF3 if it is treated with 2KF it forms K2SBF5 something like this. I will show you structures of some of those things in the next slide. You can see here, uh, this is for SBF5 anionic, dianionic and this is for SBF4 minus and this is for SBF4 F16 4 minus and this is for SB2 F7 minus. So, the depending upon the stoichiometry of SBF3 and MF one can get the following salts. Antimony pentafluoride can be prepared by treating SpCl5 with hydrogen fluoride. So, in the solid state SBF5 is tetrameric and the presence of SBF SB bridges account for the very high viscosity of the liquid. Uh, antimony pentachloride can be prepared from the elements or by reacting SbCl3 with Cl2. Uh, liquid SpCl5 contains discrete trigonal bipyramidal molecules having two longer axial bonds. So, like uh, phosphorus pentachloride, arsenium pentachloride, the axial bonds in SpCl5 are little longer than the equatorial bonds. For example, So, they are uh, 227 picometer whereas, axial ones are little longer 233 picometer. Okay. So, below 219 Kelvin the solid undergoes a reversible change involving dimerization of the SpCl5 molecule.
So, if SpCl5 is cooled below 219 Kelvin, it forms the dimer. On the other hand, dimer on warming above 219 Kelvin, it gives the gives back the monomer. So, similar to uh, trihalates of antimony, uh, with respect to the bismuth, BIF3, BICL3, BIBR3 and BII3 are all well characterized, but in case of pentavalent only BIF5 is known. So, others are not known. So, all are solids at uh, 298 Kelvin. In the vapor phase, trihalides, all trihalides have trigonal pyramidal structure. Each trihalide is hydrolyzed by water to give uh, BIOX species, which are insoluble compounds with layer structures. So, the reaction of BIF3 with fluorine at 880 Kelvin yields BIF5. So, this is a very powerful fluorinating agent. And trihalides are essentially Lewis acids very similar to PCL3, PF3 and form donor acceptor complexes with a number of ethers and also Lewis bases. For example, uh, you can see uh, here what we have is a tetrapyridyl BCL3 compound. So, it is a 7 coordinated one. We have 4 pyridyl groups N is coordinated to bismuth and here in this one BiCl to Cl8 2 minus is there and this is Bi to I 9 3 minus is there. So, other important compounds are facial BiCl3 THF thrice and merit meridional Bi I3 where Py is pyridine and also cis Bi I4 So, these are some of the examples of uh, adducts which shows Lewis acid behavior of uh, um, trihalides readily forming complexes with appropriate Lewis bases preferably nitrogen and oxygen donors. Okay. Let us look into uh, the classification of ligands now. Uh, of course, phosphines are widely used as ligands both in coordination chemistry and organometallic chemistry and also in homogeneous catalysis. Uh, phosphines have remarkable ability to stabilize transfer metals in their low valent states and also in unusual oxidation states. Uh, this diagram what I have given here essentially shows the influence of donor and acceptor properties of ligands on crystal field stabilization energy. In fact, whatever the ligands we come across can be simply classified into just three categories. Uh, first one is pure sigma donor ligands. You can look into this example here, first case where uh, I have just given a pure sigma donor ligands such as ammonia and water and the corresponding uh, uh, ligands. Here you can see they have low laying filled sigma orbitals, they interact with metal appropriate orbitals and you can see here the CFSC, the magnitude of CFSC and next we have another class of ligands, they are called sigma donor and pi donor, essentially all halides. 
they have low lying field sigma orbitals and low lying field pi orbitals because of S 2 p 6 electronic configuration. So, in this case both are directed towards the metal as a result what happens C f s c decreases considerably you can see here magnitude with respect to uh, pure sigma donor ligands. The third class of ligands are essentially sigma donor and pi acceptor these type of ligands are phosphines carbon monoxide and heterocyclic carbenes, olefins, pyridyl ligands etcetera. So, they have low energy field sigma orbitals and high energy empty pi orbitals. In this case what happens you can see uh, CFSC remarkably increases. So, this is how the sigma donor and pi acceptor ligands stabilize metal complexes in their low valent state. Of course, let us look into the bonding uh, we come across with metal carbonyls and metal phosphines. In fact, they are very similar both have low energy sigma donor orbitals and also both have appropriate empty pi orbitals for back bonding. So, you can see here in case of carbon monoxide this carbon lone pair goes as sigma whereas, pi star of CO essentially combines with one of the T 2 G orbitals to form bonding and anti bonding orbitals and to the bonding orbital these electrons are coming this is called back bonding. Similarly, we can see in case of phosphines this lone pair goes as sigma towards appropriate metal uh, E g orbitals and phosphine sigma star energy is quite comparable to the T 2 G of uh, metal here this sigma star of phosphine PR 3 combines with one of the T 2 G let us say D x y D y z or D x z to form bonding and anti bonding orbitals with pi symmetry and here these electrons are coming here. So, this essentially indicates the back donation of metal T 2 G electrons to the sigma star through back bonding. So, that means both are quite comparable the interesting point here is the energy of sigma star can be altered by altering the substituents on phosphorus unlike uh, uh, pi star where that is not possible. So, another interesting example I will show you. So, this is a titanium uh, 2 compound. So, titanium electronic configuration is D 2 S 2 3 D 2 4 S 2 and here in this case uh, titanium is in plus 2 state and having 2 electrons in the d orbital and this is an octahedral molecule surrounded by 2 bis dimethyl phosphenoethane ligands and 2 methyl ligands in axial positions. And strictly speaking any metal complex having up to 3 electrons in the d orbital should be paramagnetic, but interesting feature of this molecule is this is diamagnetic. Let us see how that happens you see octahedral d 2 and diamagnetic and here what happens under the influence of these uh, bisphosphine ligands the degeneracy of T 2 G is destroyed and d x y will become lower in energy compared to d x z and d y z. These electrons now readily uh, given to sigma star of bisphosphine this shows the diamagnetic behavior. Okay. So, of course, uh, uh, titanium 2 plus is a very strong pi donor favors metal to phosphorus pi bonding and empty phosphorus to alkyl group sigma are more stable and lower in energy. So, they readily overlap and take these electrons uh, through back donation and another important aspect with phosphines is uh, the cone angle of course, cone angle will give you some information about steric attributes in phosphines. What is this cone angle is? You can see here cone angle uh, can be defined as a solid angle yeah. let us assume this is a phosphine let us assume this is a phosphine with pyramidal structure and now this is binding to the metal. Uh, and the average metal to phosphorus distance is about 228 picometer. 
So, now I will define what is cone angle. So, cone angle is nothing but a sand solid angle theta at metal at a at a metal to at a metal to phosphorus distance of 228 picometer which encloses the van der Waals surfaces of all uh, ligand atoms or substituents over all rotational orientations. So, basically this encloses the van der Waals surfaces of all ligand atoms over all rotational orientations. So, this is called cone angle. So, this cone angle will vary depending upon the phosphorus substituents. Uh, for example, if I take triphenylphosphine you can see now this cone angle increases considerably. So, this cone angle should enclose the van der Waals surfaces of all ligand substituents over all rotational orientations. So, this is called cone angle. So, how this helps in determining the capability of a phosphine in homogeneous catalysis. For example, uh, let us look into the values I have given for various phosphines here, pH 3 is 87 degree, whereas trismesetyl phosphine has 212 the maximum here. And now, uh, for example, uh, trimethyl phosphine can form tetra coordinated compound uh, with nickel and also with palladium and also with platinum, whereas triphenyl phosphine can form a stable uh, tri coordinated compound with platinum, whereas tris tributyl phosphine can form even stabilize platinum with two coordination uh, number. So, for example, before we do any catalytic reaction, if we take a, a, a compound having 18 electron, first we have to dissociate one or two ligands. Let us look into the dissociation of uh, one of the phosphine from NiCl4 to give NiL3 plus L. Here, let us look into the uh, this dissociation constant for POME3, this is 10 to the power of minus 9 and the Talman angle is 107. So, when this ligand is substituted with dimethyl phosphine, so dissociation rate increases and it is 5 into 10 to the power of minus 2 because the Talman angle is 122. So, when you consider phosphine, triphenyl phosphine, this happens complete dissociation the moment you put into the solution because the Talman angle is 145. That means, as the angle increases because of steric crowding, removal of 1 or 2, dissociation of 1 or 2 phosphines becomes very easy. So, that means, uh, if you make any phosphine with bulky ligands, uh, prior to the oxidative addition, it readily forms 14 or 16 electron species and this information readily comes from simply looking into the Talman cone angle. So, this is where Talman cone angle assists in looking into the catalytic properties of some of these phosphines and their metal complexes. Okay. And another uh, aspect is bite angle. So, influence of bite angle on catalytic efficiency is also very important. For example, if you look into a typical square planar complex, the bite angle will be 90 degree. On the other hand, if you take a very bulky phosphines, what happens? They occupy larger space. As a result, these two will come very closer to each other. If, in case if there are two carbon fragments that have to be eliminated through concentrated elimination, reductive elimination, this readily facilitates if the angle is instead of 90, it, if it is 115 or so, these L and L, if they are carbon fragments, they readily come and establish a bond here uh, and form three centered concentrated elimination. So, this is where the bite angle also very uh, handy in looking into the catalytic efficiency of a bisphosphine ligand. So, these are some of the ligands that are generated in my group here for exploring their transmetal chemistry, coordination chemistry and catalytic applications. These are some more ligands I have shown here and these are some of the ligands derived from cyclodiphosphosane and some of these compounds also very valuable in forming metallophosphine frameworks similar to metalloorganic frameworks. And another important uh, feature of phosphines is their phosphorus NMR spectroscopy. So, these 
uh, the 31 p NMR spectroscopy is as simple as proton NMR and here all phosphines have distinct chemical shift uh, as a result what happens when we react these phosphines with metal complexes we can elucidate the structure readily and we can look into the fate of the reaction simply by recording 31 p NMR. One can also do kinetics by doing temperature dependent or variable time NMR that helps in understanding lot of aspects uh, revolving around metallophosphine complexes and their coordinating ability and also their ability to promote organic transformation as homogeneous catalysts. So, uh, let me summarize. Uh, the chemistry of group 15 elements so far we have discussed. Group 15 elements are also called as nictogens made up of non-metals in nitrogen to main group metal bismuth. Both plus 3 and plus 5 oxygen states occur for all elements. Plus 3 state is more stable for bismuth due to the inner pair effect. Phosphorus compounds in plus 3 state are excellent Lewis bases with versatile coordination behavior and are very important in coordination and organometallic chemistry and also in homogeneous catalysis. Whereas, compounds in plus 5 state are important in materials and biology. Inert pair effect dominates heavier elements due to field 3D inertial. Nitrogen forms many molecular oxides stabilized by strong p pi p pi bonding. I conclude the chemistry of group 15 elements. In my next lecture, I will be dealing with group 16 elements until then have a pleasant reading of main group chemistry. Thank you very much.